Hey folks, I want to welcome everybody to my kitchen. Well, that's a lie. This is actually my laundry room. It just, the lighting in here is a little bit better, so this is going to have to do. And I wanted to create this video to talk about how to compound topical finasteride. Now, before I say anything else, I want to just tell you that what I am going to show you is what was instructed to me personally by my doctor with a doctor's prescription with his full approval. So even though I'm going to share this with you for educational purposes, I encourage everybody who is interested in topical finasteride to make sure you consult with your doctor, your physician, and make sure that you are instructed in a way on how to effectively uh, apply and compound topical finasteride for yourself. Now, there are some topical finasteride solutions that can be purchased online with a doctor's prescription. You get an online prescription for them. But usually, if you do want to try topical finasteride, you can either have a pharmacist compound it for you with a doctor's approval, or a doctor can instruct you how to compound it yourself. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Now, I don't actually use topical finasteride except for maybe once in a blue moon. However, there are studies that show that topical finasteride is not just effective, but it's actually more effective even than oral finasteride. So it could be an appealing choice for people who are even on oral finasteride or not having issues with it. Now, I do want to forewarn people that this should not necessarily be seen as a viable solution for people who are on finasteride, oral finasteride getting side effects, because there still is a little bit of systemic absorption. But my doctor has told me that the risk of uh, side effects is much lower as a result. And since there's still so much alpha-5 reductase activity on the scalp, this is an effective way to treat androgenic alopecia. Now, just to uh, inform those who may not know, alpha-5 uh, alpha reductase is the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. And it's found predominantly on the scalp and the prostate. So applying finasteride directly on the scalp is, in fact, a viable option, even though some people say that it's, a, it, it's mostly just DHT on the scalp. It's actually not true. It's also the alpha-5 reductase enzyme. So anyways, you're going to need a few compounds. First, you're going to need finasteride. This is what was prescribed to me. Let's see if I can get the bottle right there. A lot of people think I don't really use finasteride, but there you go. Kevin Mann, finasteride, 5 milligram tablets. Now, this is Proscar. It's a generic variation of Proscar, and it's um, a 5 milligram tablet, even though you can use Propecia, which is the 1 milligram tablet. I like to use Proscar just because it is a lot cheaper and you get a lot more of it. It cost me about $9 a month, so it's really, really cheap. And you know, even without insurance, it's a pretty affordable option for most people. And you're also going to need to use a solvent. Now, there are several options you can use. You can use like minoxidil. You can make your own uh, uh, solution using alcohol and propylene glycol if you like. But I find that pretty inconvenient. So what I like to use is stemoxidine. And this is the brand name. It's called Cerioxyl stemoxidine, 5% stemoxidine. And what I really like about stemoxidine is that it works as a hair growth stimulant. Uh, the mechanism of action of it, is, it has something to do with just prolonging the hair growth of the cycle, but it works independently from minoxidil, which is another hair growth stimulant. And I noticed that unlike minoxidil, your hair follicles don't become really addicted to it. So that means that if you stop using it, you're not going to have dramatic losses or anything like that. So if anyone's interested in uh, compounding their own topical finasteride, they certainly can use minoxidil, but just be forewarned that if you start minoxidil, you're gonna have to use it for the rest of your life if you wanna maintain the benefits, since any hair growth you're gonna get from minoxidil is gonna be independent from any kind of anti-androgen you use. And that's why I definitely recommend stemoxidine. It's not that expensive. It actually can last for a pretty good period of time. It's a little bit pricier than minoxidil, but the uh, price of stopping minoxidil, of course, is the ultimate price, If you, uh, especially if it's the first treatment you use like me. So it's something I always have to use, but I find that uh, stemoxidine combined with minoxidil uh, works as a very effective uh, growth stimulant. So you're going to need the finasteride. You're going to need the uh, uh, solvent. I like to use stemoxidine. And you're going to need to use something to mix them all up in. And... The way you do it is that first, if you're having a, if you have a Proscar, you're going to want to quarter it. And if you're using Proscar, you already know how to do that. But I'm going to go ahead and just quarter it with a knife real quick. I usually recommend using something like a, uh, like a, a pill cutter. Uh, I, I don't have a pill cutter currently. It snapped in half when I was using it, so I'm just going to go ahead and use a knife. So let me go ahead and just go ahead and cut this real quick. All right. And you know, this will give you roughly 1.25 milligrams of finasteride which is what you're going to need if you're going to create like a, uh, a topical finasteride solution. You can make it in bulk if you'd like, but I like to use, uh, make it so that it's just like a one dose, one dose per, um, uh, per use, so I don't have to like store it or anything. So then 
This is what a quartered finasteride tablet looks like. It's very, very, very tiny. So then what you're going to do next is that you can either have like a funnel or something, or you can like take a piece of paper, fold it in half, and then you're going to crush the finasteride on the actual, let me get a little better shot right there. Uh, shit, let's see if I can make a little better shot. Oh yeah, there we go. I mean, not that this requires very much visual instruction, it's pretty self-explanatory. Then you want to actually just crush it down into like a powdered form, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Crush this little son of a bitch right here. And I should forewarn everybody, if you have like a wife or girlfriend, actually somebody asked me about this in the forum, if you have like a, a girlfriend or wife who's pregnant or may become pregnant, keep them the hell away from this shit because even though finasteride is normally harmless, one really big exception is that it can cause birth defects in uh, unborn children. So just make sure that none of these broken tablets get anywhere near your wife or girlfriend if they're pregnant or they may become pregnant and just uh, just keep that in mind. So it's a folded paper. I have the crushed finaster right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just take it like this and just pour it into this little vial right here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And this roughly is enough for like one dose. But of course, you're going to need a solvent as well. And that's where the stamoxidine is going to come in. And as far as much how much stamoxidine you want to use, you want to basically just use enough so that you can get full scalp coverage. Now, as you can see, I have a huge ass head. And so I'm going to use a lot more than what people normally may use. I need about four to six milligrams, uh, milliliters, I should say. But a lot of people may benefit from using just like three milliliters just based on the shape of your skull. And that's another reason why I recommend talking to your doctor about it because, you know, he can instruct you on what you do specifically. But if you are going to compound it yourself, just make sure you use enough for full scalp coverage. And the reason why I say that is because even if you um, don't have hair loss everywhere, I, let's say you have pattern hair loss like I do, then chances are eventually the hair follicles that aren't giving you problems will give you problems in the future. So as a preventative measure, just make sure you have full scalp coverage. So what we're going to do next is that we're going to take a little droplet of this thing and this up to this blue line which you see right here, that's roughly two milliliters. I'm going to put it in this little vial right here. Here we go again. A little more than that. Okay, and this stuff is this stamoxin. It smells really, really nice. It smells like the inside of a salon. Uh, the only problem is that it makes your hair a little bit greasy, so it might be a good idea to apply it at night. And I got a little cork over here. I'm going to shake this guy like crazy. And if you still see some like residual powder left in it, that's fine. Just make sure you grind it to a very fine powder. But it should be mostly dissolved. But if you have a tiny little specks left, that's no big deal. It should still be small enough for scalp penetration. That's what my doctor told me. So this should still be viable for topical use. Okay. So this doesn't look like very much, but if you know how to apply it effectively, it should be good enough for full scalp coverage. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Okay. So I'm going to try to get close to the camera doing this. I should have brought a chair in. But anyways, and also my hair's a little messed up and greasy anyways because I just got done working out. It was an okay workout. I did uh, 285 pounds on the bench for five reps for a few sets in a row. Had some diminishing returns. So yeah, it's a cloudy solution, but the particles are small enough that you should get decent absorption. So I'm going to go ahead and get down on my knees like that and just show you how I apply it. So yeah, my hair is really dry and fucked up right now and kind of greasy, so it looks disgusting. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead, try to get it in the front. And you want to massage it in real, really, really well like this. And then um, I want to kind of get it on the side too, around the temples. And this is really easy to apply. Uh, people complain about this kind of stuff or just kind of being pansies about it. But anyways, first you want to get on the front. And then you want to try to get on the back area, especially around the crown where people develop bald spots. So whether or not you already have a bald spot there or not, you want to try to get as good coverage as possible. And I'm just going to show you like how I do it in the back is that I just kind of feel around for like the uh, back of the head, the farthest tip, just, before, uh, just above where the horseshoe would be. And I just kind of rub this guy in a little bit. And then just use whatever's left to kind of touch up and put what you can on top of the scalp. And, you know, I have like kind of long right hair right here. So just make sure you part the hair effectively. And... 
just get it as best you can. You just want to make sure you really uh, put this hard on the scalp and then like, uh, like I'm going to press it really hard. Just press it like uh, firmly on the scalp. And then when you feel like it wet, like rub it in so it doesn't drip on your forehead. And just kind of gently press the plunger. You can do this with any dropper and just kind of rub it around. Uh, and that should do it. All right. So that is how you guys make, let me get my, my face in the picture again. Okay, so that is how you got, and also like, you know, just maybe just uh, massage it around a little bit. Make sure you really get it in the scalp like that. You don't want to just pour it on your scalp. That's not too effective. But you would apply it just like you would any topical. So if you're using minoxidil, it's pretty much going to be the same. So uh, it's, it's pretty convenient. And, you know, that took me just like a couple minutes to compound as it is. So this is something you may want to consider if you're afraid of using uh, oral finasteride. I mean, I can't speak personally from the side effects because I've had no side effects from either oral or topical finasteride. I did start with topical finasteride though, and it absolutely did work for me. And this also may be a viable solution for people who are afraid of uh, trying some of the experimentals like uh, CB0301 or RU5841 because even though those are very strong topical anti-androgens, uh, they haven't been FDA approved. They're uh, they're not really uh, known. Uh, the, the efficacy isn't well known outside of people's personal anecdotes, and those do work for me when I apply them to my research subject. Um, but the thing about finasteride is that that's a tried and, and true proven drug right there. We know for a fact that does work, and there is evidence that the topical uh, solutions for it are just as, if not more, effective than oral finasteride. So I do think oral finasteride, uh, well, topical finasteride is very, very legit. So this may be a good starting point for people who want to give finasteride a shot um, and are too afraid to try oral finasteride. Or conversely, it can also be used for bad people who are afraid or have actually had bad side effects from oral finasteride and may want to give uh, topical finasteride a shot as well. So I recommend using a solvent that's not minoxidil. Unless you're already using minoxidil, then you know, no big deal. That may actually save you a step right there. Uh, because minoxidil, of course, is something that I wouldn't recommend using unless like uh, the other things you're using aren't working well enough. So it should never be seen as like a standalone treatment, but rather an adjunct to help better uh, assist your overall hair loss fight, uh, when it, an adjunct to other treatments. So um, anyways, uh, that's all I wanted to say about that. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video, found it informative. I'm sorry about the shitty camera angles and everything. But if you guys have any more questions about this, uh, just let me know in the comment section, and I'll definitely try to get back to you, and I will be back soon with more content. Take care.